I'm going to build on from the previous video with more advanced techniques which will allow us to create intelligent rigs for our characters or objects. The intelligence added to the rigs will make animation a lot easier by letting us focus on the more creative side of the work. Basic concept number 7b, intelligent rig controls. Let's start by dropping the compass rig into our scene. So let's drop down an FBX character import node. I'm just gonna look for my compass rig. Okay, let's drop down a joint deform. These steps should look very familiar to you since we've done it a lot of times already. So the next thing we want is just a rig pose. And this is just to test if we have everything uh, imported correctly. So I'm just gonna play around with this. Let's take the root, okay. That works. Let's try out the arrow. Let me try rotating that. Looks good. And if I go like this, it moves away. It moves all over the place. We're going to fix that onto the compass and lock it onto its local Y axis so it behaves like a real compass. So let me reset this. And the next step, I'm going to be adding in an object. It's just going to be a sphere for now. This sphere is a temporary object for us to work with that later on we can replace with any other target objects that we want the compass needle to automatically point to. Now this is where I'm going to be introducing a new node that I haven't taught on my channel yet. It's the rig attribute VOP node. And this is just like any other VOP. It's just like the point VOP or the primitive VOP or volume VOP. The rig attribute VOP node functions exactly like a rig wrangle, but it's mainly used for Houdini's kin effect system. It's a node base, so you don't have to code anything and instead you get nodes that you can drop down. It's more of a visual programming workflow. Now, what do I hook into the rig attribute VOP? We're trying to create an intelligent compass to have the needle automatically point to our sphere. Okay, so we want to manipulate the needle. The compass rig will be fed into the rig attribute vault, into the first input. That's the one we're trying to control. So that goes into the first input, or this is the way how I think of it in order to determine what goes into the VOP node. Okay, let's go into the VOP node before I hook up the sphere. This node starts off completely empty which is a bit different from the other VOP nodes. In the point VOP, Houdini usually start you off with some default global variables for you to work with, but in the rig attribute VOP, it's a little different. So what do we do with this? If you look onto this viewport, and let me turn on the name. I'm gonna come down here to the marker symbol. Now we can see all this. I also want to turn on the point numbers. So arrow start, that's the one that we want to manipulate. The arrow start bone is the bone that controls the needle of the compass. So that's important. And it's point number two. So let's go back into the rig attribute ball. Let's double click this guy. Come in here. We're going to get that arrow underscore start bone, which is a point bone. We're going to get point transform. Now we have this as the first input which is correct. As for the signature, we, we can refer to it by the point number, which we already know what it is. Since I've turned on the point numbers in the viewport, it is a point number two. So we can always fill it in right here. Point number two. And this will get us the arrow underscore start. Or you can always fill it out by name. Then you have to type it in. So it goes arrow underscore start. That's the bone name. or the So this node gets everything we need to know about this point. Now, what do we want to do with? We want to control the transforms of this point, the arrow start point bone. So it points towards our sphere. Let's go back up to the object level. Let me template the sphere over here. Let's double click to get into the rig attribute VOP node. Constraint. We want to look at constraint to automatically point to the sphere. Now, what does that tell you? That means we want to set the point transform of the arrow underscore start. So this node gets us the current position and transform of the arrow underscore start. Now we want to set it. So I just want you to sort of get used to all this naming. It will make it a little easier to find these nodes. So we want the set point transform node. I'm going to drop that down. Now, in order to set this guy up, so we can actually take this and just hook it up to the point number. And the color also gives a hint as to what type it is. So this, these two, the input and the output of these two sockets are compatible because of they're the same color. So that's a small hint. Now I want to do more than that because I want to actually change the orientation of this needle. But where do I want to change it? There is a node inside the rig attribute VOP called the look at. So if you just type look at, 
there's three types. The one that we're going to use today is the look at kin effect. So this one will automatically update the transforms for our bone. So it looks at another object. So this is perfect for what we want to do with the compass. So let's drop this down and see what kind of inputs it needs. Now it says, where are you looking from? Where are you looking to? And it wants an up vector as well. We want to look at the sphere. First of all, we have to hook up the sphere to the rig attribute bob. So let's go back up a bit. And you can see here that I haven't connected the sphere into the rig attribute bob yet. So let's do that. Let's connect this guy onto here. Now it's going to throw an error because there's no, this sphere doesn't have a rig. It's just, it's a geometry with a bunch of points. So that's not going to work out for us. We only want a general idea of where the location of the sphere is. So I'm going to take the center point. So I'm going to extract centroid. I'm going to put this down. Piece number, I don't have any. Um, so I'm going to take the name out and I'm going to switch this piece element to point. Now this will automatically calculate the center point of the sphere for us. If you put the render flag onto the rig attribute VOP, the error goes away. It's best that you give this a name because KineFX rigs all have names. Every point has a name. Every point SOP is a bone. So that's what makes this possible. It's best to have a name just for good practice. So let's just give it this drop down a name note and we want to switch the class to a point because that's all we have. We don't have any primitives. And the name, I'm just going to call this target. Okay, let's go back into the rig attribute bob node. Let's drop in the, the target point, which is our sphere. Now, how do we do that? We're going to use that same, we're going to use the same get point transform node, but we're going to get the sphere instead. Get point transform, drop that down. Switch the input from first input to second input, because that's where the sphere is connected to. And we can use point number. We can use this point number because there's only one point and it, I mean, it's going to be zero anyways. But since we already added a name, it's called target. We can just use target. So I'm going to use name and we can type that in. So now we have something to look at. So where is it starting from? This is, so we want the world transform of the needle. So this is something uh, you need to understand the difference between world transform and local transform and effective transform is something I don't use very often. So I'm not going to be talking about it in this video. Now let's take that debug rig pose node that we had before and I'm going to move the compass. I'm going to take this root and I'm going to actually move it somewhere else. I'm going to move it over here. The orientation of the needle has not changed. It's still pointing in that direction. And if you look closely over here in the rig pose node, nothing has changed for the arrow start that means the needle hasn't changed at all the local transform has not moved at all the only thing that has moved is the root let's take this root and let's move it over again you can see that root is being updated but the arrow underscore start is still fixed it's fixed in all its numbers no matter where we put this this only the root is being changed. This is important to understand with the local transform. The local transform is always relative to the parent. The world transform is more of an absolute position in the entire world or in the scene. What are the Houdini units of its position in the scene? This grid right here. Now that's the world coordinates. So if we're going to move the root from here to here, the new world space coordinates has changed for the root, but the local transform for the arrow underscore start, which is the compass needle, has not moved. And that's one of the reasons why we need to use the world transform. Where it is in the Houdini world, in the world space. So where are we starting from? We're going to take the world transform of the compass. And we're going to hook that up to the from, because that's where we're starting. Now we want the target of the sphere. So where is the target in the world space of Houdini, in the Houdini world? Well, I'm going to take the transform and I'm going to look to here. Okay. How do I get the results now? How do I get this? The look at will do all the heavy lifting for us and it will calculate and do all that math. It spits it out in another transform. This transform will tell our needle where to look, how, where to orientate or where to rotate in order to be pointing towards the target. So we're setting the transform here of the needle. You're not seeing it update in the template just because I haven't hooked this rig attribute bob to anything else. Like it needs to be hooked up to the joint deform. 
in order to complete the whole process because the joint deform will turn the rig into actual geometry. So we have to hook this up here and you can instantly see the arrow snap this way, not towards the sphere, but it is aligned. If we look here, it's aligned in the direction of the sphere. It's just not aligned in the right, in the opposite direction. So let's go back in. Let's go to the look at, and we actually have to adjust where to look at along which axes. So this is a tricky one. Now to understand this look at axes, now this is based on the local transforms. So we actually have to know where the local transforms are. So let's go back up here. You can drop down a visualized rig node. This is definitely going to be colored black because there's this node does not affect anything. It's just for visual purposes. I'm going to ignore the joint scales to get all the joints in the same size. So I'm going to click this, click this, adjust the joint scale so we can actually see something. Okay, there we go. So in the viewport, you instantly see all the axes. So let's go back into our rig attribute bomb node and let's see this. Now, I don't know what I clicked. I randomly clicked a bunch of um, things over here. It is pointing towards the sphere now the sphere in the shot as well okay this joint over here is the arrow start and it's pointing along the y-axis so you can see this little blue hat over here that is the z-axis sorry that's the z-axis and the z-axis is aligned towards or along to the sphere if we look over here in the look at node the look at axes, we have the Z axis selected, which is correct because we want the arrow underscore start to be pointing the Z axis to be aligned with the sphere. Now the up axis, why would we need to know the up axis? Now that goes into a lot of uh, the cross product orientations. That is a little beyond the scope of this video. If you're interested in the math behind all of this look at constraint and how it works, I do have a cross product mini series where I have a more detailed explanation of how all the math works. For this video, we're going to keep things focused on creating intelligent rigs and keep things simple. What do we select? What do we do with this up axis? What do we pick? Well, we need to know the up axis of this arrow. White hat is in the way, so I'm just going to go back. Let's turn off the white hats. Let's turn this off. So that's this option over here. Let's go back into the rig attribute bop. Now, what I want you to see is that this arrow start node is pointing. It has the Y axis pointing downwards. So that's sort of like the negative Y that we want. Now, what happens if I switched this over? If I switch this from the negative Y to the Y? Well, let's give it a try. Let's switch it. Same, the arrow is still pointing towards the sphere. It, this works because this arrow is looks the same no matter where you flip it up and down. Literally, this, this arrow is flipped over. So this will matter a lot more if you have um, a head, like a character head. Its head would actually be turned upside down that's what this will do. It's asking what orientation. It knows where to point. It just doesn't know which orientation because the cross product values are the same for the negative y up vector and the positive y up vector. The rig attribute bot handles the hardest part of this part. It automatically points toward the sphere. Now let's go back up because that's all we need from the rig attribute bot, the look at constraint. That's completed. Okay, but we're not quite done, are we? Let me turn this off. Okay. We're not quite done. I mean, the arrow is pointing in, like it's it's pointing into the sphere. It's pointing <laughs> right into it. This this can't be it, right? I mean, if we move this, we can test this and we move this compass. Let me turn it on wireframe because the needle is going straight into the compass. We can't see. You can see that the arrow is following the sphere. Let me get a little bit more realistic. So it is following the sphere. You can see this arrow is pointing towards the sphere. Nowhere, no matter, oops, no matter where we have the compass, like it's always pointing towards. It. It's working. We still need to lock the needle so it only rotates on the compass top surface. I'm gonna drop down a configure joints. Configure joints. This node will allow us to define the rotation limits of our rig so that for instance this compass we don't want the arrow to rotate into the compass what it's doing right now we don't we want to limit the rotations of freedom i'm going to put this down now how are we going to hook this up now it comes with three inputs the skeleton uh center mass and motion clip we actually only need to use the skeleton 
the other two inputs are out of the focus of this um, video. So I'm going to hook up the skeleton. And what skeleton are we hooking up? This one? The look at one? Or the one from this? We're actually going to hook up this one. This one over here. This has the full skeleton of the compass before the look at constraint is applied. So before this rig, rig attribute. So we're going to hook this up into the first input. There's something you need to know about the configure joints node. It requires another node to complete its job. This node here only adds attributes to into the rig. We look into the geometry spreadsheet. After you drop it down, you're going to see a lot of different nodes. You're going to see this joint config. So if we select this, it doesn't have a joint config. If we select the, the configuration joints, uh, I know it's empty right now because we haven't configured this node yet. It'll add in the limitations that we set for this bone into the geometry spreadsheet so it actually knows about it. But it needs another node to solve it to understand all that data. One of the nodes is the full body IK node. You can also use the ragdoll solver node. Today in this video, we're going to use the full body IK node. The full body IK node will be able to understand all this data. So where do we hook this up? We hook the skeleton towards the target skeleton. So this goes in there. Uh, the second input is for our IK controls. It gives us a chance to tell the full body IK node what we want the rig to do. The look at constraint we had set up in the rig attribute VOP will tell the compass needle to point towards the target sphere. But we want the full body IK to figure out how to lock the needle onto the local Y axis as well. So that goes into the second input. Now we uh, connect this back to the joint deform like how we always do. Okay, let me get rid of these. Now in the full body IK, we need to, we need to remember to turn this mapping attribute to name, map match by attribute name. So that's important. And let's see if we broke anything in the rig pose node or testing node and just moving the compass around. Uh, we're going to have to wireframe this because we can't really see the needle. Okay. So the needle is still pointing towards the sphere. That's cool. That works that we didn't break anything, but it's still not working the way we want it to. Now let's go back to that joint configure node and let's actually configure the rotation limits. Let's add a configuration. So let's press this plus button here. What do we want to rotate? Let's take a peek at the rig pose node to confirm the local axes of the arrow underscore start bone, which controls the compass needle on this Y axis. So that's what we want. And that's the only thing that we want to be able to move. So let's go back to that configure joints node. We have a rotations weight here. So I don't want it to move on the X. So we're going to want zero here. And I only want it to move on the Y, which is what we saw when we, I should just put the visualize rig here. I'm sorry. So we can actually see the, the axes. So this little hat here is the Y. So we only want this to move on this. So we want the Z is zero. Everything else is zero. Let's go back and let's test this. Let's go back into the rig pose node, which is our testing node, this guy. Uh, I'm going to put the render flag on the joint deform so we can actually see it more clearly. Template the sphere. Come here. Okay, let's move this around. Root. Okay, it instantly works. So a combination of configured joints and a little bit of rig attribute VOP adds so much more intelligence to this compass. Now we only have to worry about putting this compass into a character's hand and we don't have to worry about animating the arrow and where it points. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.